stay in the realm of right and wrong and agree and disagree. And, I, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm just as consistent in this conscious conversations where we don't have to agree or disagree and we don't have to get involved in right and wrong. You just understand, that's all. And uh, any other thoughts flying through the brains? Theo? Um. Mike? What I wanted to ask you was, um, what are the roots of this conflict mindset that is in this society? Where, where does it originate? To be honest with you, I have no idea where the conflict mindset originates, but I do know the conflict mindset can be managed. And it's not necessary to have a conflict mindset. And so that's what I work on. How we can not have a conflict mindset and how we can try to move forward with understanding. So I wanna read this something that I wrote. It's called Be Humble. And, and you have it in the book here as well. Um, because for me, this kind of helps to remind me to stay on track when I'm in, interacting with people. Um, and it's just something I wrote a, a while back. And it says, what we know is very little. And there's always someone who knows a little more than the tiny bit we think we know. In the context of all existence and unknown information, let me put on my spectaculars. In the context of all existence and unknown information, what we think we know and understand is but one speck of dust from one grain of sand in one puzzle piece made up of an infinite number of grains of sand in one puzzle made up of an infinite number of puzzle pieces, in one universe made up of an infinite number of puzzles, in a potentially infinite number of universes, which brings us to this. If a lifetime was 10,000 years and we lived a million lifetimes, there would still be next levels of understanding available to us as lessons for next levels of understanding. So compared to all there is to know, what we think we know and understand is little to nothing, which means it never makes sense to argue over information, especially when we understand that with new information, what was new and true yesterday can become obsolete and false today. Ultimately, this means there is so much that we do not know that we really have no idea what's not possible, which also means that for us, everything that we can think of in our own life lane is possible. It is just a matter of us finding our own life lane and acquiring the knowledge and skills needed to transition our ideas of thoughts and limited understandings from consciousness to reality. There are only th three things I know for sure, life, challenges, and physical death. I love you. And I always say, um, and, and, and so this, this is just, a. Uh, for me, a constant reminder of that it's just too much that we don't know to be arguing over the little bit we think we do know. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's it. And, and I will say like I always say, I love you and I always will. And I will absolutely never, ever give up on my people, ever. You'll never hear me say, um, okay, you know what, I'm, my people, forget, hey, it's, it's off. I'm out for me now, it's a wrap. I didn't gave up on these Negroes. It's, and I done heard many leaders say that, prominent people say that. And like, it's like, I understand where you're coming from, but where I am is, such that I understand that we functioning with a consciousness that was created by white people after a 400 year period. That bear on the bicycle, it was only four years before he was out of his natural mind. Well, they had us for 400 unedited, uninterrupted years. Whose mindset do you think we operating with? How can we sit back and look at those among us and say, that's a sh look at them. We don't say that about the bear when we see him on the bike. 
at most we're entertained. And on a higher level of thinking, we say, wow, he's been trained very well. But we never look at the bear with disgust. Look at this stupid bear. Can't he just claw the trainer and run for freedom? But when we look at our own people, that's the attitude we take without understanding that we function in with a consciousness they created, no matter whether we like it or not. And, but that has never been addressed. They one day said, okay, y'all free. And we said, okay, we's free. And then we just started, no counseling, no, no social work, you know, no assistance. Nobody helped us say, hey, hey, your mind is effed up. Is that we put something in there that just ain't going to have you functioning well for the next thousand years. And we haven't even addressed it. But we can look around at our people with all that we've accomplished. We, we got billionaires amongst us. We got the most popular people in the world. And the, one of the things that's a telltale sign that we, we still have a lot of work to do is when you uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions, hundreds of thousands, you're rich, famous, and part of your object objective in life is to stay relevant. You, you, we, we can't be functioning in our right mind if, if that's a part of our, to stay relevant. To who and for what? That is a, a desire to be validated. And when you need to be validated, you're a slave. That means your entire personal peace is determined by how somebody else thinks about you. So how do you have $100 million and you still trying to be relevant in social media? Well, we, we got a lot of work to do on our consciousness. And nobody's addressing the consciousness. Right here in Hartford, Connecticut, we got all these fancy schools. They rebuild them, and, and they got real technical, nice names. And everybody dressing up in uniforms. And it's nobody addressing this consciousness. You can't create a midnight basketball program to stop violence if you're not addressing the mindset that's taking the violent actions. Even, again, my perspective, not necessarily the truth. Even our religious teachings, the love of money is the root of all evil. That's a deflection. The foul consciousness of man is the root of all evil. A man with a foul consciousness can pick up anything and make it foul. Gun, money, book. Whatever. So if we're dealing with real, we can't even, we can't be teaching the kids money's bad and, and as crazy as this might sound to other people, guns are bad. No, the person holding the gun who does foul things is bad because the consciousness is determining the actions. And if we want to improve the quality of our reality, we have to improve the quality of our decisions. The way we improve the quality of our decisions is to improve the quality of our consciousness. So this consciousness has to be addressed with young people and, 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 and those long in the tooth as well. <laughs> we got to deal with this consciousness. We can't keep skipping over it. We done skipped over it. For, uh, how, how long did we, are we have supposed to have been free since 1865? Uh, 200 years? So I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. We, 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 uh, we've been avoiding this consciousness thing, and it keeps slapping us back in the face and saying, hey, this need to be addressed. You know, I thought about it some years ago when Martin Lawrence, he was at the top of his game making all the money in the world, rich and famous. And he in Hollywood standing on the corner naked, directing traffic, talking about somebody going to kill him. We got to deal with this consciousness. 
got to deal with the consciousness. So that's where it's at. If anybody else has something to say in closing, we can do this. Uh, okay, cool. Well, I, I thank y'all for coming. I definitely appreciate it. And, and I will say again, the next time we have a private conversation, I would like for each person invited to bring a young person. I hope everybody put their email, reaffirm the email on the list. And, um, and we'll go from there. And I, I'll keep you posted and let you know when the next one is. Are y'all cool with bringing a young person? Okay, wonderful. All right. Thank y'all for coming. We out. <laughs>